This is a stickman physics lesson for waves. We're going to look at some of the math. And first of all, we're just looking at some new variables. We've had velocity before, meters per second was a unit. Uh, we got wavelength, this new symbol is a little upside down y. And the unit's going to be meters. This is just going to be the length of a wave. You just think of it backwards, length of wave. Um, and then we have frequency. You've seen that in circular motion if you're following my lessons. And the unit's going to be hertz. And a hertz is nothing more than a cycle or a wave. In this case, we're going to talk about a wave. It's going to be how many waves per second. Um, displacement, when we're just talking about uh, distance forward or direction that a wave has traveled. We'd use displacement unit meters. Um, time is just the time anything would take, whereas period is the time it takes for something to happen. In this case, we're going to talk about time it takes for a single wave to occur would be considered the period, whereas time, you know, it could be a third of a wave, that's just time. But when a full thing happens, that's going to be period, capital T. And so that's just what I mentioned earlier. We're going to look straight at the math. We'll, we'll get back to this later on. Once again, period is not just time. It's something special. It's time for this whole event to occur. Period ends at four seconds because that's what it took in this picture to get through one full wave. And a full wave, remember, is not just that. That's just half a wave. It has to be all the way up, back down, past the equilibrium point, and then right back up like that. And that would be the event of a wave. Now, if you have, if you were in a previous lesson from last semester, we could talk about a car driving a distance. So that car is going to drive a distance. That car can drive three meters. And let's say it drove that three meters and it took two seconds. Well, you're going to go to the V equals X over T equation. And you're going to say, well, the total distance was three meters. And the total time was two seconds. And you're going to get a velocity of 1.5 meters per second. Well, there's going to be some problems where it's just talking about a wave, and, and forgive me, it's just, just half a wave right here, um, the amplitude above the equilibrium position. But the, the wave itself is just acting like a car. We're not talking about this X is not the size of the wave. It's not talking about wavelength. It's just talking about this wave traveling a distance just like a car. And so when you have a problem like that, we're just going to go back to V equals X over T. But some problems you're going to have be given other information. You're going to be given, and here's my little animation to go with it, but I'm going to work off the side. You might be told that one single wave, so one single wavelength is, in this case, three meters. And then you have a frequency. So how many waves pass you per second? Well, if two waves pass you per second, two waves per second, Well, we can go ahead and we can put that together. If each if each wave was three meters and two waves pass, six meters of waves are going to pass you per second. And so you get your six meters per second right here, which ends up being that. So what you have to watch out for, if you're given length of a wave, wavelength, or, you know, you, that that's when you're going to use the V equals wavelength times frequency, uh, rearranged in, you know, whatever way you need to for the problem, you'll be solving for it. F for frequency, you might be solving for velocity, you might be solving for wavelength. You gotta rearrange it where you need to. Uh, a little bit more on wave speed. If a uh, speed, if the speed of a wave um, is in the same medium, or sorry, if the media, if, if a wave is in the same medium, um, the speed of that wave is going to be the same. Uh, let me give you an example. So if I make a noise, if I'm underwater and I make a noise, and I'm over here underwater and I make a noise, and it has a large wavelength, so uh, the wavelength's up, frequency is going to be down because the velocity is going to be the same. Now, so this would be a lower noise, but if I go ahead and make a higher pitch noise, what I did instead was I have a smaller wavelength, but I have a greater frequency because more of these waves are going to pass you by in a given time because underwater, these waves would travel since they're both sound waves, they're going to travel in the same water, same temperature. They're going to travel at the same speed. So you're just going to have a greater wavelength comes with less frequency. Less wavelength comes with greater frequency. Now, if I was outside the water, um, I would still see these same wave, you know, wavelengths and frequencies, but the wave itself would travel faster if you were in air. So, so when I'm talking about this in the same medium, so if you're in water, they're going to speed is going to be the same. 
they both would be different, but relative to each other, the speed would be the same in air if we moved this situation into air. So wavelength and frequency are inversely related. That's what I just said earlier. With wavelength, if wavelength is greater frequency, well, bigger frequency means smaller wavelengths. And if I have greater wavelength, well, that's going to be a lower frequency as a result. So these are going to be inverse of, of each other. Whatever one does, the other one's going to do the opposite. And then velocity is going to stay the same because you're if you're if you're in the same medium, which most questions would would be um, in the same medium. So let's look at the relationship between wave period and wave frequency. And sometimes you might hear in a question that I, I ask you is, um, there's so many wave crests that pass a certain point in a given time. Well, each wave crest comes with a wave. And in this case, when we're talking about cycle in the, the wave unit, we're going to be talking about how many waves there are. So time uh, period, or capital T, is time over how many waves or cycles, and frequency is how many waves per time period. And then when you break that down and do the math, this is going to break down to how many waves per second. And this would break down to um, how many seconds per wave when you do the math and calculate the time, the period of the frequency. Now, they're both inverse of each other. So when you take a look at these two equations, time over cycles, cycles over time, they're inverse of each other. So what you can do is if you've old, you're already calculated frequency, you can just take the inverse of it. 1 over F is the inverse, and you can use that to calculate period. Um, either way would be correct. If you had time and cycles, you could use that, or you can just use, you know, you can either use that, or you can use the inverse of frequency. You're going to get the same answer either way. And then for for frequency, uh, if you had period already calculated out, you could also just include it right there, inverse it, and it essentially does the same thing as this is doing right here, and it would give you the answer for frequency. Uh, just a reminder of, of rule one. So you should be able to qualitatively say if, if wave, what, how much does wavelength change if the frequency is, if I say less than the original, you should be able to say, well, the wavelength has to be more. That would be qualitatively without numbers. But when you add numbers, you want to find an equation that's related. So how does the wavelength change? So we're asked about wavelength. If the frequency does this, and it doesn't say anything about velocity, and once again, velocity is going to stay the same. We're assuming the same medium. Well, you want to rearrange this for the equivalent of wavelength. So you divide out the frequency from both sides, and you get wavelength equals velocity frequency. And we're going to take this, and we're going to make a ratio of it over itself. And we're going to put a new values up top, and we're going to just say 1. We're going to put ones down the bottom, because whatever it was before, 1 times original is the original. Um, and we'll see, and you've seen this if you had my class, uh, other, other lessons. Uh, if, if you have 1 over 1, we just ignore that, because that's just going to be 1. So we want to look at the top part. 1 over 1 fifth is going to tell you how many times different, and when we put, plug that into the calculator, we find out that the, the wavelength is five times the original if the frequency is one-fifth the original. And then, and then you can do some problems. Um, there's a bunch of different things. Uh, here's an example. We'll just do one. And then, um, you have problems. If you're using my site, you can, you can do the problems on my site, get some extra practice, or uh, your teacher's website if they have a uh, you know, or, or teacher's worksheet that they may have given you. So we have a jet plane that traveled 194.4 meters per second while in deep waters of the ocean. Um, so we have that. And it says, how long would it take? So we're asked for time. And we're given a distance. We're just given a straight up distance. We're not given a wavelength. And so I used D here, but I've been using X in my, in, in my notes. So just make that an X. So when you're thinking of this D here, think of X. But your teacher might use something different, might use D. Uh, we'll get 6,199 seconds as our answer here. And there's just a bunch of different things you can do. I'm just going to kind of zoom past this. This is the same question, but with different velocities. Um, here we have wave crests in 45 seconds. Well, this is going to be the cycles. So when we're trying to figure out frequency, we're going to say 15 waves are the cycles um, times 45 seconds. Just divide 15 by 45, and you get 0.33 hertz. Um, when we move on to what's the period after giving that information, uh, we can do it either back to the original time over cycles, and we get three seconds, or we can use the alternative that I said. Um, it's, it's the inverse. One over F would give you the, the period, and so take one over 0.33, you get three seconds. And so that's the answer there. And lastly, if you have a question like this where you're given a wavelength, um, and you're given a, you know, the radio wave traveling through the air, so it gave you a velocity, 
they gave you a, a, a frequency and they asked you for wavelength. So here we're actually asked for a wavelength and that's where we're gonna use this, um, should be V equals wavelength frequency, which would rearrange to when we divide out the frequency, we get wavelength equals velocity over the frequency. And just my advice to you, extra parentheses right here, especially if you're gonna have a number times 10 to the six, uh, making sure you type in the calculator right. And if you type in the calculator right, it, it would work either way, but you should have parentheses just to make sure that you're keeping that number and the denominator together and doing what the calculator thinks you're gonna do. And so that's that.